Lesson 13, the Gartley. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a couple things. One, up in the top left-hand corner is that sign, important information. As we go through this lesson, you will see in your workbook and on these slides that this sign appears on certain pages. On those pages, you will probably find very important information that can help you out in your trading. Also, I would like to point out in the bottom center of the page, there is a number. That number corresponds with the number in the workbook. If you lose yourself, match up your workbook number with the slide number that we're working on and you should find your, your place. There are 16 lessons on trading the Forex to help you. These lessons do focus in on technical analysis. These lessons are applicable to other markets where you can pull up a financial chart. Now, as I have said many times before, successful traders will do what unsuccessful traders can't and won't do. This lesson, the Gartley, is an incredible lesson about the natural harmonic vibratory Fibonacci movement of the market that can participate greatly in your success in trading. Successful traders take the time to educate themselves on how the market works to where unsuccessful traders don't. Unsuccessful traders are trying to become lucky and, and they're trying to, if you will, gamble in the market. Successful traders have a tendency to go figure things out first. They educate themselves. They understand how the market works. They form a clear methodology and a discipline and then they start to trade based on that education. I pose this question. As you embark on learning how to trade, what are you going to be? A successful trader or an unsuccessful trader? Take this statement into your life and change the word trader and replace it for the word people because I have learned that successful people will do what unsuccessful people can't and won't do. When it's time for you to make a decision in your life, just ask yourself this question, what would a successful person do? This statement can really play a big part in your life. We have the 21 day 3% rule. The human mind forgets 80% of the knowledge it acquires within three days. Over the next 18 days, it continues the loss of information until it settles at retaining only 3% <clears throat> of the original acquired information, which means if you don't use it, you lose it. Play this lesson over and over again until you understand it and can apply it to your trading methodology. By the end of this lesson, you will learn that the markets are governed by natural laws, that the markets work in a numerical sequence, You'll learn how to read a price swing and its extension, how to find a Gartley and Fibonacci numerical convergence. You will learn how to trade that Gartley bounce. You will learn how to create a Gartley trading plan and trade that plan. And you will learn where to place your protective stop loss order to financially protect yourself in every trade. Before we get started, I'd like to review lesson one. We are watching Japanese candlesticks, which monitor the open, high, low, and close of a time period. We're watching bullish and bearish candles. This is what they look like on a chart. Bullish candles mean the market is rallying. Bearish candles mean the market is reacting and coming down. Bullish candles will be white in this presentation. Bearish candles will be black. Uh, this chart right here is a two hour chart. Each candle represents two hours. Uh, another thing I would like to point out, important information sign right there, that most traders watch a bid chart. This is a bid chart and it is monitoring the bid price. There is a bid and an ask. The bid and the ask are usually three to 10 pips in spread in the currencies. In all financial products, there is a bid and an ask. Uh, the bid is always lower than the ask price. And traders buy on the ask 
and sell on the bid. Why? Because buyers buy from sellers and sellers sell to buyers. Now this is very important when it's time to trade because if this is a bid chart, that means this is the current price, 107.30, which means right at the close of that candle is where the prices are. If I buy right now at the market, I will be buying on the ask. The ask will be 107.35, which means every buy should have two sales, one for profit, one for potential loss to protect yourself, which means our sales will be on the bid. That means that all the candle has to do is come up and hit that price and you will be filled or stopped out. Now, if you are selling and that's your first order and you're shorting the market, you will sell on the bid, which means if we entered the market right now selling, we'd be filled at 107.30 and our buy stops would be on the ask, which means if the market rallied to potentially take us out for a loss as we short this market, you will notice that the ask price, which is higher, will hit your protective stop loss before the bid will. This is where a lot of traders get confused. They think that because the candle didn't hit it, they're still in. Many times the candle will come right up to the actual ask price and, and a fall. And what happens is the trader has a tendency to feel like, wow, I'm still in. Whew, I didn't get stopped out. But in reality, they were stopped out because the ask price is always higher than the bid. You must understand this in order to avoid a lot of frustration as you trade. <clears throat> there are three types of orders we'll be using. A market order, which is an order placed at the market at whatever the bid or ask price is. A limit order, which is an order placed to enter or exit the market at the exact place price or better with no slippage and a stop order, and that's an order placed to enter or exit the market at an exact price that turns into a market order when touched. <clears throat> now let's look at this chart again. Here is the current price, that's where the market is. Any order placed above the market or below the market will be, <clears throat> excuse me, a working open order. It will be an order that's not filled. Now, if you choose to buy above the market, that will be called a stop order. If you choose to sell above the market, that will be called a limit order. These are the rules. If you choose to buy below the market, that's a limit order. If you choose to sell below the market, that's a stop order. Here's some additional ordering rules. Every buy should have two sells. If you're buying, you're a bull, you want the market to go up, you need to have a sell for profit and a sell for loss. Here is the buy on a chart. You should have a protective sell stop loss order and a limit for profit, a sell limit order for profit. Every buy should have two sells. Conversely, every sell should have two buys. If you're selling, you're shorting the market. You're entering the market first, selling. You're a bear, your position is short. As the market starts to fall, you will need to come out of the market buying for a profit and you will need to also place a protective stop loss order uh, just in case the market starts to go against you so you can control your losses. Remember, let's quantify our losses first before we trade. When we quantify our losses, the profits have a tendency to take care of themselves. Every sell should have two buys. Now let's look at this in a chart. If we were to short the market here selling, we then need to have a protective stop loss order, which is at the last high. That is a buy stop. Every sell should have two buys, one for potential loss, one for profit, a buy limit. Now an OCO is whether we are buying or selling, we need to have two orders, one for profit, one for loss. Whichever the market hits first, it will cancel the other order so that you don't have a working order out there. Please keep in mind as you cancel and replace in an uptrend, only cancel and replace to the new last low after the market has made a new high. Learning how to properly cancel and replace is explained in detail in lesson three under equity management as well as lesson 16, trading strategies and their justification. 
the opposite takes place when you're chasing the market in a downtrend only cancel and replace to the new last low after the market has made a new low excuse me only cancel and replace to the new last high after the market has made a new low uh, this is not a greedy way to chase the market this is a very educated way to chase the market and lock in profits technical traders learn to read charts technical traders read charts like doctors read x-rays to the trained eye charts are telling a story technical analysis gives traders a high probability of knowing where the market is going how can that be I will tell you how that is people trade in the market even if they work for a bank or a financial institution people trade in the market people are creatures of habit we have a tendency to be predictable and repeat our habits because we are creatures of habit charts do nothing more than monitor our buying and selling habits therefore these charts have a tendency to repeat themselves that's what the study of technical analysis is all about it teaches traders how to predict the future Technical analysis is applicable to all markets anywhere you can pull up a chart. And once you've been educated on how to read a financial chart, you will start to control your financial future in the markets. I'd like to do a quick review on support and resistance, which is lesson two, so that you clearly can identify highs and lows. A high is the body of a candle or a wick that is higher than the two candles to the left and two candles to the right. Please keep in mind that not all highs are levels of resistance, only higher highs that are being created become new levels of resistance from where the market is currently being traded. Uh, lows are two candles to the left or two candles to the right that are higher than either the wick or the body low. That constitutes a low, but not all lows are levels of support, only lower lows that are being created become new levels of support from where the market is currently trading. What we are, want you to do is we want you to learn how to just pull up a chart, have your eyes scan all the levels of resistance and all the levels of support and have as recall in your head from lesson two, the financial game between the bulls and the bears. Please don't underestimate that game. Bulls are trying to establish new levels of resistance and take out all the old levels of resistance and bears are trying to establish new lows and take out all the old levels of support. All protective stop loss orders must be at the last low if you're buying and the last low and the last high if you're selling. Now let's look at this chart. If you're, for whatever reason, you place a buy order here, your protective stop loss order needs to be at the last low. Please quantify those stops before you trade. If you can't afford the loss, don't trade. If you're shorting the market, whenever you sell, your stop order needs to be at the last high. So quantify those losses. If the stop order is too far away from the entry point and does not meet your equity management requirements, which are clearly explained in lesson three, then pass on the trade and go find another trade. Our focus is survival. Let's review trends and trend lines. This will be helpful in understanding this lesson. Remember the market moves in price swings and as it moves in price swings, it has a tendency to make higher highs and higher lows. And when it makes higher highs and higher lows, <clears throat> it is in an uptrend. And when you spot an uptrend, you will draw all your trend lines across the lows of support. Let's look at all these lows. Look at how we drew the trend line across the lows of support. Now, there are three primary upward trend lines. Lesson five focuses in on this, and lesson five focuses in on teaching you where to buy a trend line. Uh, there's an inner, outer, and long-term trend line. Now, a downtrend works exact opposite. A downtrend is making lower lows and lower highs. See how this low is lower than that low and this low is lower than that low? Look at how we're making lower lows and lower highs. Whenever you spot a downtrend, you will draw your trend line across all the highs of resistance. Uh, 
see how we drew that line across the highs of resistance forward? Once again, lesson five focuses in on teaching you how to trade the long-term outer, the outer and the inner trend line for profitability. Uh, just a quick review on price swings and their extensions, which is lesson seven, a great lesson that uh, you need to understand before we can get involved in the Gartley. But as we discussed in lesson seven, remember the market is governed by natural laws and we discovered that the world is governed by natural laws and that Leonardo Fibonacci in the year 900 AD discovered a numerical sequence. He was the one that introduced the uh, numbers to the Romans instead of using the Roman numerals. They now use the uh, numerical numbers. He discovered a sequence that when you add two numbers, they will equal the sum of the next. And when those two numbers are added together, they will equal the sum of the next. And so when you take the previous two and add them to the sum of the next, you come up with the sum of the next. So two plus three equals five, three plus five equals eight, five plus eight equals 13, eight plus 13 equals 21. We went into detail about that in lesson seven. And then we started to divide those ratios and numbers. When we got to the point where 89 plus 44 equals 233 or anywhere along the line uh, in this sequence, and we started dividing 89 by 144, we came up with one or 618.618. And when we divided 144 by 233, we came up with 618, and we started dividing 233 by 144 and 144 by 89, and we started to do all this dividing and lesson seven and we started to come up with some ratio numbers and those ratio numbers were a 382, a 50, a 618, a 786, a 1.618 and a 1.27. We equated them to percentages and then we equated them to price swings and we discovered that Fibonacci ratio numbers are potential levels of support in an upswing, they become a location where the market should bounce, and that if the market bounced at a 382, 50, or 618 of the previous price swing, as it bounced there, you turned and rally and took out the previous high, that it would rally to a 1.618 or 162% of the original price swing. Let's look at this chart. See how the market rallied. It came back. It bounced at a 382. U-turned, took out the previous high, and then went straight to a 1.618 extension. These are the extension numbers, 1.27, 1.618. These are the retracement numbers in an upswing, 382, 50, 618, 786. If you have any difficulty whatsoever in understanding your Fibonacci's, please feel free to call us up as a company. Talk to our customer service department. Make sure that you have a data provider that can allow you to have Fibonacci numbers. This is a very, very important tool when it comes to trading. When the market retraces all the way down to a 786, we learned that it will only go to the 1.27 or 127%. And that in reality, when the market is retracing back to a 786, which you can see here, it is slowing down. Look how much time it took to get to the 1.27 extension. We learned that price swings move at different speeds, that when the market bounces at the 382, it's very aggressive, fast, it's like a car going on a freeway, versus when it's bouncing at a 786 retracement number, it is slowing down. Downswings work exactly opposite, and they work in the same numerical sequence. Uh, Fibonacci's now in a downswing become hidden levels of potential resistance. Now, in a downswing, we turn everything upside down. This is the downswing. It starts at a high, stops at a low. As it is retracing, it first meets the 382, then the 50, then the 618, then the 786. And we learned that if the market bounces at the 382, 50, 618, any one of those U-turns takes out the previous low, 
it should go to the 1.618 or 162 percent. Look at how this one bounced to the 382 and went straight to the 1.618 extension and bounced.